Hello, this is an answer to a question by Eldin12 on my video on uh, 2D Parallax. So the question is, uh, how do you do this? I mean, you created a custom editor for the game itself. When the game is in its final state, how are you going to remove the editor and keep everything working? How do you store the changes you made using tile maps and so on? I'm curious how that works. So let's just take this question apart and answer it bit by bit. So the first part is like, how do you do this? I mean, you've created a custom editor for the game itself. And what this means is that in my game, so this is the game here, uh, if I press F2, it jumps into the editor and I can press F2 to jump into the editor and jump out. And I can make changes in, in the editor. Let's see, where is the start? It's over here. I could paint some things up in the sky uh, like this and uh, they will be there and I can go back and remove them. Uh, and if we continue here, when the game is in its final state, how are you going to remove the editor and keep everything working? Let's start with how are you going to remove the editor? It's true that I do not want to ship this game with this editor still in there. It's only for my purpose as this editor. It's not for any modding or anything, you know. So there are several ways to do that. And uh, one way to remove an editor is just to like, so I said I press F2 to go into the editor. I could keep all the code for the editor in the game and just disable the button that goes into it. Then there is for uh, the person playing, there is absolutely no way to get into the editor. And if they hack my game, and make it so that you can go into the editor, well, then I just think that that, that doesn't matter. This is a single-player game. There's no advantage to gain, you know, from doing that. That's one way. I could also go, you know, I, am, I have my separate editor file. I could just delete that file and then delete all the references to that file in, in my game. And the game would still work fine. And that's the second part of this part of the question. Uh, how are you going to remove the editor and keep everything working? Now, my game doesn't need editor at all to work because when I, there's a function called load level here. Uh, this is in, the, my, in my game code, not part of the editor. So when my game starts up, we can look in game init, then it will load the, uh, then it will load some level. And it's usually the first level, which is this forest thingy here. So load level, is a function that uh, loads a couple of different JSON files. All my data that my editor saves is stored in JSON files. So there is one with the entity types, which is, if you look at it, there's, there's this editor where you can define like uh, uh, custom things. Sorry about this blurriness. That's, uh, I haven't fixed the uh, um, filtering there. Um, uh, so uh, the entity types comes from uh, this editor here and are saved out to a separate file. And I can show the, that file soon. And then I will just do this. Um, damn it. Ah, whatever. It can be there. I just got some pop-ups. Uh, so the entity types are saved in one JSON file, and then it also loads the level, which is another JSON file, and the level is uh, sort of the stuff I in these three edit modes, where I can place tiles, place entities, and also change the properties on entities, like this cat here, I can change some layer and stuff. All those things are saved in the level, because the game has several different levels, but all the levels share the same entity type stuff. And then I've recently also added a dialog system, which is edited in this tab. And there, here I have uh, this uh, dialog uh, system with a graph that I built. Uh, and those dialogues are saved in a separate JSON file. So there's three JSON files being loaded here in load level. I know load level maybe should only load the level, currently reloads all the entity types and stuff, which could be loaded once, but it doesn't really matter. So that stuff um, loads three different files and then it, uh, deserializes all the JSON data in those files and then it runs create world from that stuff and create world is a function that um, can take this serialized uh, uh, this uh, well it, 
the create this stuff just loads the serialized state and then create world is the function that actually deserializes it and then further processes processes that data into something that is actually playable and um, if we go back to so if we go back to the question here uh, i can remove the editor and keep everything working uh, the editor also uses create world um, when I end, uh, when I go into the uh, editor mode, it runs edit edit mode init, and it will uh, it will also load a sort of a serialized state and create a world from that. And uh, and when I click save in the editor, there is a save button here. When I click that, then uh, this function here is run, and in the editor, and this function. Um, will write these three different JSON files. The entity types file, the levels file here, and the dialogues file. And those are written out and they can be loaded by the editor or by the game. They are in the same exe, but uh, I've written them in such a way that they're actually a bit separated. And the game, the editor doesn't actually um, work with the same world that's currently loaded in the game because that would create some problems uh, so the editor actually loads in a completely new world and then you edit that and then when you exit the editor it actually throws out the whole world and sets up a new one using that data um, and yeah we could I can quickly also show since uh, there's the last part of this question is how do you store the changes you've made using tile maps and so on? I'm curious how that works. So I mentioned a bit that I use JSON and all this stuff uh, is saved into JSON files. And I can show, for example, the um, I don't know which one is best. Maybe entity types is a good one, or maybe just level. So this is one of my levels. Uh, it's a JSON file that contains a list of the entities in it, and entity has lots of state like this, a position, a scale, and then there's some different variants of entities, so that is stored here. And then the level will also contain some tiles, and the, all the tiles are here, and here you can see sort of that, um, which uh, index in the tile set it uses, and at what coordinate in the world that tile sits. Uh, and the dialog file is... Uh, essentially, this is the save dialog file. It's a bunch of, yeah, I'm gonna clean this up so it doesn't save this whole array here with lots of empty things. But here is a, here is a node in the dialog with uh, a couple of choices. And uh, so that can look like that. And then we have up here, we have all the connections between nodes. So it just says from a node with a certain index to another node with a certain index. And that that's how all these uh, little uh, connections and stuff in here uh, look on disk. I just wanted to mention this because sort of you're asking what, uh, how do I store everything? And whenever I click save in the editor, then it then it writes all these free files. It doesn't do any kind of delta. It just takes the currently the currently edited level and the currently edited level is always the one I'm currently playing in the game. When I press F2, then that's the one I'm editing. So it saves that level, it saves the entity types, the stuff from this tab, and then it saves all the dialogues, always everything. And yeah, and uh, also I can mention uh, how um, related to this, you know, I show here the JSON file and I show that the game can create the world and sort of, uh, let's see, where was that? Um, you know, the game can read the level file and then create a serialized state thingy and then create a world from it. But uh, one in more interesting thing here is, of course, how does the game actually go from the world in the game or in the editor? Like how when the, ed the editor has a world, we can show the world struct. The world struct contains a bunch of entities and tiles and a lot of other things. And when you click save in the editor, it has to take this stuff and turn it into JSON. And currently the world contains everything. Uh, it has the end, it won't save all these things because some of this is like acceleration structures that are only used during runtime. But you have like the entities, the tiles, the dialogue trees and the entity types, these different things. I know some of them maybe 
shouldn't be part of the world, but that's just how it is right now. Doesn't really matter. Those different things will get written as uh, will get serialized and written to the JSON file. So how does those actually get serialized? So if we go to the save function again and look here, then we have, uh, so this is in the editor uh, file. It will serialize the whole world in the editor. And like I said, the game, the editor and the game has two separate worlds. Like it, they have this uh, an, their own uh, world struct uh, object. So it runs serialized world on this thingy. And what this function does is we could look at, for example, I guess the level is the most interesting. So th for the level, it will, for example, serialize all the entities. And um, how that works, well, it will actually serialize out the, whole, out the whole level. We can look at that. And I have my own serializer, uh, which looks like this. So it's a separate file. And the serializer is a thingy that uh, I, I can't go into too much detail about this because it's a very long thing. But what it essentially does is it has lots of different functions like this one, serialized level, and uh, it takes a level pointer. And then this one is like, okay, I'm got, now I'm going to serialize all the entities into a uh, object called entities in the JSON file. So we can, for example, see here um, entities like this. This name here, entities, comes is because it says entities here, and then it runs this serialize field function. And this serialize field function is sort of a generic function that will do some stuff, and uh, then it will end up depending on the type of that field. So in that, in this case. Uh, entities is a dynamic array of entities then it will be like okay uh, then now then i need to serialize a dynamic array okay serialize a dynamic array this is a generic function that can serialize dynamic array then it will serialize each array element when it serializes each array element then it will eventually be like okay now i'm trying to serialize an array element of a specific type and in this case the specific type is entity it comes into serialize the serialize entity function here it takes a pointer to an entity and here we see that it will write out the id and the um, misspelled hidden field hidden put the pos and the layer and all that and you see all this stuff in the level here this is uh, the ID, the layer, the position, these names here come from this stuff and the data that is written to that field is this thing. Uh, and so forth. So it's just a, like a hierarchy of these functions that it goes through. Uh, the nice thing about this method for serializing is I actually use the same function for deserializing as well. So when the game, I can show here, load level, uh, like so, load level runs create world, and create world runs also runs the serializer. So it's a serialized level, but it has initialized the serialize in a reader state. And when it is in a reader state, then we, well, we can look at serialize entity again. Then, when for example, uh, the so let's see the uh, the disabled field is just a bool, so that's easy. So it will eventually come all the way down to serialize bool. And this function uh, uh, just has a pointer to uh, uh, the bool. It's a generic because there can be different kinds of bools. Uh, but uh, then it will, if it's currently writing, so it's writing out the disk, then it will set the current value uh, that's supposed to be written into the JSON file to a JSON boolean and we will put the value into it. And if it's reading, then it will instead take out the value uh, f at this sort of position where it's currently reading in the JSON file and write it into uh, the, uh, like write the value of this parameter that comes in here. So the, it, it can use the same code for both serializing and deserializing. Uh, this sort of method of doing it is called the media molecule uh, serialization is that what it's called uh, I think so no little 
it's, I think it's from the it's from Little Big Plant or something. There's a guy in the Odin Discord called Jakob that uh, recommended me to look at this, and I sort of made my own funny version of it that actually in the end becomes JSON because those methods usually use uh, binary output. But I want I done something similar. It's probably not very fast, but I get human readable data in the end. This last part is, you know, very much an overview, but I just wanted to say a bit about the serializer because that's sort of the magic glue in between. I also, I can also just quickly mention that the serializer I also use for undo redo in the editor. So whenever I do any action in the editor, like move this node and like press control Z, then, uh, well, after I move this node, then it serializes the whole state currently and puts that on a stack. And when I press Control Z, then it recreates the whole state of the editor from that. Doesn't sound very uh, fast perhaps, but for a small game like this, that actually works. And creating undo is a huge pain. And this is sort of a quick shortcut you can do if you have a small enough game that it's actually performant enough to just serialize the whole state and undo it and stuff. These last bits, this, these last bits were a bit tangential. But yeah, uh, thanks for the good question. And uh, yeah, if people ask more questions that are like complicated like this, I might just answer with a video. Have a nice day.